Now, um, somebody who I've just gotten to know, uh, who also has a program on our network, uh, TNT Radio, uh, who is uh, playing this weekend uh, here at the festival, Joseph Arthur, who also has a story to tell about how this affected him and the stance he took, which I think is, there's something in, in this for everybody, but I'll hand it over to Joseph Arthur, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, check. Thanks, Patrick. Um, yeah, I, I've been a musician for a long time. I was living in New York City when the whole pandemic happened. And um, um, I, I had a good, I think we got addicted to social media and it neutered us in a way. Social shame turned out to be far more powerful a force, I think, than many of us reckoned it was maybe. And, and propaganda and its ability to work on people because we all knew lots of really smart people that just bought the whole narrative hook, line, and sinker and wouldn't allow anyone to even question it without demonizing them. And I don't know, I, so, I sort of started making little weird arty things about how I didn't like masks when that first happened. And when they started rolling out um, the mRNA stuff, and then they wanted to give it to kids. That's when I finally just sort of took the gloves off of my social media and just started saying, this is insane on the face of it. Uh, kids have no real risk of, of death from this thing, and, and this is experimental. And I was kind of shocked at the response I got. I just, it was just a flood of uh, venom. And it was before Joe Rogan really started speaking out about it, or, and Russell Brand hadn't really come into it, those guys were much smarter in the way they did it. I was just kind of like a bull in a china shop uh, at the time when you really shouldn't have done that. Um, <laughs> and I would just get lots of people writing me like saying, please stop talking. And old, fr old friends, um, and then LA Times did a four page uh, hit job piece on me in the Sunday art, time, art section. I, I'm an artist of note, you know, I have a little, Whole thing going on, but I did not warrant a four-page Sunday Art Times, L.A. Times feature, basically on how I was a, a, a mental patient, essentially. Um, so it was a trip because, and I mentioned I was early on it just because that frames why this happened. Because things I were talking, I was talking about, isn't even controversial anymore. I mean. Ivermectin works, whoop de doo But if you said that three years ago, it was like, how dare you, you know? Um, stuff like that. And, and I, I was, uh, you know, pretty outspoken about it. But um, yeah, I had a pretty, I, I mean, I had a, a tour scheduled. I had a, a, a super group project with a record deal, booking bigger gigs than ever before. And, and inside of a few weeks or, months all that was gone away i lost my record deal my booking agent my management um gigs i had booked as a solo artist called to cancel it was nuts it was and i hadn't really achieved escape velocity in my career you know like joe rogan can get canceled ish but not really he's got escape velocity so there's certain artists i think that are more vulnerable to cancellation um and then you have to just sort of frame it like we're all on a soul journey you know it's good for our egos to be broken down it's been good to be humbled you know it's it's actually like a sort of spiritual journey this whole thing um but the effects of cancellation are are, are real and it does get exhausting it's interesting what you were saying about how they're going to start mapping your minds because with ai they can do that they can start really sort of psychoanalyzing people through AI. It's like minority report type of stuff about to occur. So, I mean, that's my story in a nutshell. I just like, I, I got this talk radio uh, job at TNT, which has been great. And then coming out here and playing music for y'all is amazing to me. It does make you appreciate life more. And the I would have worn shoes, by the way, if I would have known. I was going to be on stage. I'm, I didn't know until we came. I'm grounding, you know. You, it's good for you. It's, it's peer-reviewed studies. It takes away inflammation and all this other stuff. Anyway, so. Yeah.
Yeah, that's misinformation. Yeah, but 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 that's the other thing too. It's like fasting, water fasting. A three-day water fast can reset your immune system entirely. Doing natural healing modalities, what they were talking about in the panel before this one, is so true. It's just like, you know, if they were really concerned with saving our lives, they would be talking about exercise and fasting and and prayer and um, you know, this does seem to be a spiritual war that we're on uh, in control versus people that are sort of more i don't know for lack of a better way of saying it real quick god fearing or who have belief in in the natural order of things and and the in the sort of intelligence of the design here and trust that it's you know we're very powerful so jordan peterson was talking to bill maher the other day he said he thought it was a psychopathic war and the reason i think some of us could see through it versus why others couldn't is maybe some of us had encountered evil in our lives before and so evil wasn't a concept to us it was an act and you know beyond just like oh we hear like horrific stories about somebody killing a bunch of people or something like but more subtle forms of evil that are more prevalent like gaslighting blame shifting projection all the the everything in the psychopathic handbook is exactly how they operate this sort of organization of control. So, anyway. Joseph is not being altogether telling you the whole truth on that story about grounding. He does have a pair of shoes. <laughs> Tell, tell us, tell us about, tell us about your shoes. <laughs> My Crocs. I'm a dad now too. I had, a, I have a two-year-old, so. Uh, my style has just become destroyed. I used to shop at Barney's, and now I live in Arizona, so I just wear shorts and a t-shirt and no shoes. And the worst is a fanny pack. That's like, I don't have it on now. I'm trying to quit. <laughs> a bum bag. A bum bag. Yeah. So Crocs in a bum bag or bare feet. How many of you seen that film Raising Arizona with Nick Cage? You got to like that. That's my life. Joseph is living that film <laughs> in Tempe, Arizona. Thanks, Joseph. And you know, I'm 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 really impressed. Uh, you know, Joseph wasn't a political person per se, but he became through talk radio. It really gave him a platform to really you know, expand as a political commentator to the point now after a year and a half that he's a bona fide political commentator in addition to being a, a musician. And that's not something you ever plan to do, is it? No, no, not at all. I mean, that that's what I mean. It's like, I think we all have to be brave and speak up because I do trust God looks after us, you know. I don't really love the way he looks after us all the time. Like, I wish it was more on my time scale, like, and exactly how I want it. It's not. But when you, like, sort of zoom out and go, wow, yeah, I have developed this entire whole life, basically. And, and I think we've all met new, amazing people through this. And so it's just this consciousness is rising amongst us all in response to what's happening. So it's an interesting race. It's like their tyranny is pushing us down and our consciousness will probably become shockingly evolved. That's what I'm hoping. 